Have your Bibles this morning, and I hope that you do. If you find your way over to Psalms, chapter 84, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4, and then we'll slip down to verse 10 in a few moments, but uh, it's primarily 1 through 4. Um, and as we look at this scripture this morning, I want you to kind of think about a few little things. Um, you know, this building that we're in this morning, uh, it's, uh, it's a church building. Uh, and, and as it is built, uh, I, I, I've, been, I've been a builder. That's all I've done all my life is, is, is build things. And uh, I've I built a few churches, and I've built some other buildings. I've built some school buildings, and uh, I've built factories and, and, and all types of things. I've had the privilege of being involved with those things. And, you know, when, this, when a building like this is built, as far as the, the engineering and the building codes and all of those things go, it's no different than any other building that's built. It's, it's, it's masonry, it's, it's sticks, it's, it's wood, it's nails, it, it's steel, it's concrete. All of those elements are involved. The only, the only thing I can think of a, a, a place this is considered, that's actually now a, a place in the code that says a place of assembly. Now, of course, that could be a gymnasium or a lot of places, but a church is considered a place of assembly. And, and, and for that fact, uh, it has to be, the code has to be a little bit different because it, uh, a place of assembly assumes that it's going to have a lot of people, of occupancy uh, greater than just uh, uh, you would have in a house. So uh, it needs to be designed to a little bit of a different standard and make sure that these big open spans can withstand a big snow load or a big wind load or that kind of thing. But, but other than that, it's no different when the code looks at it, when the building official looks at it, when the engineer looks at it or the builder looks at it. It's no different than any other building. And then it's a church and the name of God is assigned to it. It's the house of God. It becomes different. And then it's filled with the people of Oh, it's very different. It's very different. And that's what makes a church a church. It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's God, the presence of God here in this place. And, and it's the presence of the people of God here in this place. Whether it's here in this sanctuary or in those Sunday school rooms or in the fellowship hall, wherever, wherever it is that we gather together, and as I read this psalm this morning, uh, it, it puts me in mind uh, of God's house and, and how excited David was to be there. So let's read that together. Psalm 84, starting in verse 1. He says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Verse 4 says, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. So, I want to ask you a question this morning. Is this a special place to you? Is there something special about this place for you? I hope so. There's something special for me. Uh, you know, this psalm uh, is, is called the Psalm of the Tabernacle. And uh, it is thought that this psalm was written by King David while he was in exile uh, from Jerusalem during the rebellion of his son Absalom. And if that is, uh, if that is the case, it reveals how much, uh, how much David's heart yearned to, uh, to be in the house of the Lord. It kind of gives us a little snapshot into David's heart. He was a man who loved the house of the Lord. He loved to be in God's house. He, he looked forward to the time that he could go to God's house and spend time in God's house. To David, there was no place on this earth so special uh, as it was to be in God's house to, uh, that he could uh, go there and he could uh, be there. And he knew that when he went there that he would find the presence of Almighty God. 
And it was a special place to him. For David, the tabernacle was a, a, a place that he desired to be. He wanted to be there. And when he wasn't, he missed it. And he longed for uh, that time that he could be there. And I know that the true house of, uh, of God is, is, is heaven. And we know that. The true house of God. That is where God dwells. He is there. And he is here with us as well. But, but also, uh, we know that his true tabernacle now because of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, it lives within us. We carry it with us. It's, it's in us and it fills us. And uh, I, 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 Have you ever heard, uh, you know, you, you, uh, we talk about being filled uh, with the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So what, what does that really mean? What does that really mean? If you could, if you could kind of get an example or a, a, an idea or a picture in your mind of being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's it's like just if you if we could just uh, if we could if we could just take everything that's inside out and take this body this shell and just slip it all over the Holy Spirit and push it all in in all the right places and and, and do all that filled with the Holy Spirit it takes up every part of us from the very top of our head to the end of the little hairs on our head sorry sorry um, but uh, some of us uh, some of us don't have those but wherever. Uh, but I'm just saying, look, it takes up every single part of us. Nothing is left. Uh, there's no voids. There's no airspace. The Holy Spirit, it, can, it, it just it fills us completely. For David, the tabernacle was the place he desired to be. Now, today, the church is the visible symbol of of this heart that David, uh, uh, of this, uh, of this, of, uh, of of God, it's the it's the visible thing that uh, that we see the Holy Spirit, the the, the living Christ, uh, God Almighty. This is the symbol of all of those things. This is the symbol of of Christ, and it's the symbol of Christianity. And when I love this, when the saints of God gather themselves to worship the Lord, and they gather themselves together to worship the Lord in in spirit and in truth, there is nothing on this earth that comes any closer to be in heaven. When we gather together, think about that for just a second. When the children of God gather together in his house, a house with his name on it, and we gather together to worship and praise and sing to lift each other up, to encourage each other, to, to care about each other, and to, to worship and to praise. Oh man, we're, there's nothing, anything closer to heaven. You see, this place in which we gather is a place that's dedicated to the worship of God. It's dedicated to, to the glory of God. It's sticks and and brick and, and concrete. <coughs> and it is filled with God's people. It's filled with the presence of the Lord. The things that made the tabernacle special to David ought to be the same things that make the church special to us as well. So I'd like to share with you. I had them all worked up in the hall. I told them I had 14 points this morning. <laughs> but uh, I only had four, so... Uh, I, I won't be too long. But uh, first of all, the church, it inspires a sense of delight. Uh, David described the house of, the, of God as being amiable. The word means worthy to be loved. God's people ought to love the church. And, and, and there are two ways that we can show our love for the church. And, and the first one, which you're demonstrating today by being here, is to be present. To be present. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as it is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need to encourage each other to gather together. Be present. And then when we are present, we need to be pleasant as well. Psalm 122 verse 1 says I was glad when they said to me let's go into the house of the Lord 
Were you glad this morning when you got up and you were thinking, oh man, today's Sunday, I'm going to Sunday school, and then we're going to have church, and, um, and you know, and then of course uh, we're going to have uh, Subway Sunday, we're going to have a time of fellowship afterwards, and, and, and we're going to discuss our youth and children and talk about those things. Were you glad? Were you glad for that? Uh, I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to assume you, you got number one right because you're here, and I'm so thankful that each and every one that's here this morning is here. I'm so glad that you came and decided to worship and, and praise the Lord here this morning with us. But were you pleasant? Were you happy? Were you excited? I hope so. You know, that's one of the things I love about standing in the hall. I know I've shared this with. I've shared it with Catherine before. And maybe I. I might have said it, but I, I you know, uh, I, I stand out in the, in, the, in the choir. They turn that corner and make that corner, and they come down the hall, and I, I love to look at them because they're always smiling when they come down the hall. I, you know, we kind of <laughs> shake hands, and man, they're glad. They're glad to be here. It just, you know, it gets me excited. I'm so glad to, to see those smiles. You know, the reasons why I love the church and and, and, and there's so many uh, reasons that I love the church, and a few of them because when I come to the church, I know that I'll find hope here. I'll find hope. I've, I've had a maybe not such a great week, and, and, and maybe things aren't going so good for me right now, or something's going on in my life, but I know when I come here, I will find hope. I'll find help here. I'll find help. I'll find fellowship. Oh, man, I enjoyed that time of fellowship on, on Wednesday night. I enjoyed the time of fellowship this morning. And, and that we'll have this afternoon. I come to the church and I find friendship. And, and, and if you've lived here all your life, maybe, maybe I see this from a, different, from a different perspective because I know there's some of you that have lived here all your life and, and you can go anywhere in this county and you'll know somebody. And, 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 and you'll know who their mama was and who their grandmama was and who all their brothers and sisters are. But we're not from here. But I can come to church and I find friends. Of course, those friends help me to find more friends outside of this building, outside of this place. But friendship, I, I find friendship here. I find companionship as well. Those that we can talk to and pray with and and share concerns and, and, and things that are going on in our life, companionship. Also, I can find understanding here. And I find worship here in this place. You see, I find the things here in this building, in this church, in this house of God that help me to to uh, be able to navigate and be able to live life each and every day, not just for the few minutes that we're here on Sunday morning or the little bit of time that we spend on Sunday night and a little bit of time on Wednesday night, but it helps me each and every day to navigate the things of this world. I, I do love the church. I, I find the things that I need to live life right here at the church. And I'm so grateful that, that God has given me a heart that desires to be in his house with every opportunity that I have. And I'm so thankful that, uh, that we have opportunities to be able to serve here at Bacon Baptist Church. I do. I love the church and I love God's people. How about you this morning? Do you love God's church? And, and do you love God's people? Do you do you love the church this morning? The church, it inspires a sense of desire as well. Verse 2 says, My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. David tells us that his entire being, everything about David, everything that, 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 that uh, uh, allows David to breathe and work and walk, uh, wants him, he longed to be in the house of God. His soul, his body, his heart belonged to, longed to be in this place, in this tabernacle that he was away from. And he so desired to be there. And everything about him was pulling him there. Perhaps David remembered what many saints of God have forgotten today. Perhaps he remembered that the house of the Lord is an oasis in the desert of this world. Perhaps he remembered that the house of the Lord is a safe haven 
from the storms of life. Whatever it was, whatever thoughts that occupied his mind when he thought of the house of God, when, when David thought of the tabernacle, no matter how far he was away from it, his, his, his heart began to, to race. It, 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 his pulse began to accelerate. It quickened. And his eyes would, would get bright as he, as he talked about the tabernacle and the, and the gathering and, and the place of God. And he knew that he, he longed to be there more and more. And the farther he was away from it, the stronger this longing was to be in the house of God with people that were like him. All throughout David's life, he exhibited the desire to be in the house of the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. You know, when I, when I read that, especially that last part, and to inquire in his temple. So why is it that we go to every other possible source there is before we consult the Lord? We watch Dr. Phil and there's Oprah and all those other things. There's books. Go to the bookstore. There's that huge section of self-help books. The Bible has its own little section over here. It's not in the self-help section. That ought, to be, that ought to be the first one in the group. But we extinguish everything there is, every possibility, every idea, every thought that we can uh, about how to, how to, how to who live this life in this world in, in this complicated time. And only as a last resort do we seek God's face and seek God's word. But it says here, and to inquire in his temple. The answers are found here in the house of God, amongst the people of God. The whole idea here of David's experience is that he was a man who loved the house of the Lord, and he longed for it when, when, he, would, uh, when he would be away from it. You see, far too many of us, far too many in our day, uh, just treat church as something we could take or leave. We really don't have any passion for it. However, we need to understand a couple of things this morning about that kind of attitude. You see, the desire of the heart reveals the condition of the soul. And what we long for in life reveals what we love, and what we love reveals who we belong to. Who do you belong to this morning? Do you belong to the world? We belong to Jesus. There's very good reason why the child of God should long for the house of God. <clears throat> you see, it's a place where we can come and meet God. It's a place that we can come and, and see Him. The Lord is always with His children. You see, He's promised to meet us. He has promised to meet with his people when they gather together to worship. He's promised that. Um, I, this verse, I, I know it's a very familiar verse, but uh, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20 reads, For where two or more are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Now, a lot of times I ask questions, I say, please don't, don't raise your hand. But I'm going to ask you to raise your hand this morning. And if you don't, that's okay too. No, no, no we're not taking score or anything. But did you come this morning to gather in the name of Jesus? Okay. Right here, it just said, again, I am there in the midst of them. He's here right now. He's here right now, and that is evidence of it. It says in Scripture, and we know that Scripture is true, and you said, I am here gathered in the name of Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit is working and moving here in the life of Bacon Baptist Church. Praise God. 
The church, it inspires a sense of devotion. Verse 3 says, even the sparrow has found a home in the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even your altar. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in the house. They will still be praising you. As David thought about the house of the, uh, about the, house of the Lord and about how far he was away from the house of the Lord, he, he, uh, he began to reflect on the little birds that he could see uh, flying about him and and uh, he, he begins to think of these birds and he mentions the sparrow and the swallow. And if we could uh, give a couple of labels to these birds this morning, uh, we could label the sparrow as the worthless bird and the swallow as the wandering bird. David tells us that both the worthless sparrow and the wandering swallow found exactly what they needed at the tabernacle. You see, I think there's a wonderful lesson for us to see in those verses right there. You see that uh, we can learn from these verses that teach us that the truth that the house of the Lord is a place we can live. That we can dwell the sparrow, the sparrow, the worthless sparrow. The sparrow was worthless and he was unwanted and they would arrive in, in huge numbers, in great numbers, and they came looking for shelter. They come looking for food and a, and a place to rest. And these little birds are a picture. They're an illustration of the sinner. They're an illustration of me. You see, the sinner is invited to come to the Lord. And though there are many and there are great numbers, there's always room for all who come. You see those sparrows, they came and, and, and they filled the nooks and the crannies and the eaves or wherever they could get into a, a little spot to, to rest and to light. Don't you know this morning there's room at the foot of the cross for all who come. Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 says for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, he uh, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I, I went back and I looked at that and, and there were no qualifications there as far as the, the number. It didn't say that the first five or the first ten or the first thousand or the first million. But it says whosoever, whoever, whoever calls on the name of the Lord. See, all who come and seek shelter and food, there's plenty of provisions in the Lord for all. You see, this place truly is a place for the unwanted. It's a place, it's a place uh, for a permanent dwelling as well. You see, this verse says that the sparrow found a house here. It found a permanent place of residence. Thank God the church is a place where we can come and join and take root and, and be rooted and grow and become strong in the Lord. It's, it's a place that we can make our roots being part of the corporate body of Christ, the church. It's a place for the pilgrim as well. While the sparrow is more a permanent residence, the swallow, he was, he was more like a, a pilgrim. He would come and he would go. He flies away in the fall and he returns in the spring. He's a, he's a wanderer. Yet at the tabernacle, the pilgrim swallow found a place of safety and shelter in the midst of his journeys. And the house of God is a place of safety and shelter in a cruel world. And it's a, it's a place where the cares of life can be laid aside and rest can be found in the house of God. Note that word nest in verse 3 for just a second. That, that, that word sort of gives us the idea of something uh, temporary. Have you ever really looked at a bird's nest? Maybe one that you took out of a tree or one that fell out of a tree. And while it is well constructed, we, we sort of see that you know it's, it doesn't have a top a lot of times. It's just a, it's just a bottom and it's sitting in it and, it. and it's fragile in its own way. And, and, and it, uh, it kind of gives the idea of temporary. What a blessing. The church is a great uh, gift from the Lord. But we won't need the church forever. The 
church is like that ditch. Sometime it'll pass by and the Lord will call us home. You see, one day the journey of life is going to end and, and we'll go to our eternal home in heaven. What a beautiful picture David paints for us. It is a place for the young. The Bible tells us that the swallow found a place to raise her little ones. What a lesson for us. The church is a, a place to raise children. Amen. I believe it is. It's a great place to raise children. Here, they can hear about Jesus and the plan of salvation. It, 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 it is in the house of God that they can learn how to worship and praise the name of the Lord. In church, they are raised in the midst of the redeemed. Redeemed, that makes us special. If you're bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus, you're, you're redeemed and you're special. The company of the redeemed is a good place for children to be brought up. In fact, when they are raised in the right atmosphere at church with the right example at home, they'll usually find their way back to the nest, back to the home. You know, that ought to cause us to want to have the right kind of church. So that they know they've got a place to come back to. No matter how far they may go away. Like David, to have that yearning in his heart. No matter how far David uh, had to go away. And, and David was away because he didn't want to be away. But he was away because they had pushed him away. Whatever the reason might be. Making Baptist Church to be a place where the word of God is honored. And the will of God is sought and practiced. The power of God is on display. Praise of God, the praises of God are heard and prayer is offered to God and where no man and no program ever takes the place of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a place for the weary. I think the church is a, is a place of rest. I think that we know, uh, man, when we've been beaten up by the world and we don't have, seems like we don't have anywhere else to turn to, we know we can come to the church and we can we can come and we can find rest and, and we can find hope. It's a place where we can come and lay down the burdens and cares of this life and find peace to worship the Lord God. You know, uh, my Sunday school teacher over here, Carl, uh, me and him have had this conversation a couple of times and, and, I, and I, I, uh, I've often thought that uh, when we come into, into a time of worship, uh, we're so burdened down by, by the world and by life and by things. And, you know, we do all things and we have the invitation at the end. And, and, and part of that invitation is to come to and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Sometimes that invitation is to just to lay down the things that, that the world has loaded up on our backs, just lay them down at the foot of the cross. And somehow or another, I think we got that out of, uh, we need to do that at the beginning. You know? When we come and we begin our time with God, to be able to have that time to just come to the altar and, and just lay down the burdens. I mean, we, we, can't, we can't listen for God. We can't hear God's word when we're so busy worried about how we're going to take care of this and what's going on with that and, and what's going on in our lives and the lives of our children and our grandchildren. And We can take those things at the very beginning and just... Lay them down at the foot of the cross, at the, at the, at the foot of the cross, and, and allow God to, to lift those things off of, of us so that we can hear Him. And He can prepare us to worship and to praise. I'm so glad that the Lord has provided His people a haven of rest in the church. Well, think about something for just a minute. You know, uh, I thought it was odd that David would have used the sparrow and the swallow. Teeny, small, little birds, weak and fragile. Why not the eagle? Well, the eagle, he is too ambitious. How about the vulture? Well, he's too foul. How about the hawk? He's too warlike. Or the barnyard fire, the chickens and the roosters and the hens. They're too dependent on man. How about the old barn owl? 
He's too fond of darkness. And then how about the mockingbird? The mockingbird, he's too filled with himself. However, the sparrow and the swallow are lowly and little, and they're fragile and small and delicate. And they're filled with, and they are not filled with self, but are keenly aware of, of their needs and, and their condition and how delicate it is. And when we find Christ as our Savior, He becomes our shelter, and we have found a place of perfect peace and rest in the tabernacle. Through him. The church, it inspires a sense of duty. Psalm 84, and if you would look back at verse 10, it says, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. In this verse, David tells us that he would rather serve in the tabernacle as the man who opens and holds the door then he would to spend time and energy serving the world and Satan. What a lesson for the child of God. Friend, the church is a place where we can exercise our gifts in the Lord. And there's a job here for you and there's a job for me. There's a job for every believer. When God saved you, he, he saved you with a purpose. He saved us to serve him. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. You know, I know there's a lot that walk around and say, I, I don't know what my gift is. I, I don't know where I fit in. I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you looked? Have you took time to get in God's Word and, and, to, and to seek out what your gift is, to see where God wants you to plug in? Yeah, it's so easy. I, I tell you, man, I, I have used that excuse a couple times. I remember when we moved and when we moved to, uh, and, and we left our church family and we moved to Rock Rapids and we would go to church and it was so easy for me to, you know, man, boy, that's a big old wheel on this turn. I just don't know where to jump in at. It's so easy to use that excuse. God has saved us to serve Him. The fact is, the Lord has given each and every one of us a gift. He's given you a gift, and He's given me a gift. And for the church to be as effective as it can be, and for it to be as effective as it should be, every member must determine what their gifts are, and they should use them to the glory of the Lord. He's given them to you for a reason. Don't waste those things. There are many who are looking for a place of service in the house of the Lord. Most in our day are, are looking for a free ride. They, just, they want to come and they want to be a part of the church, but they don't want to have any part in the church. But we are called to be a part of it. The body, uh, Scripture, uh, I, I won't read it, but I want you to mark this down. And when you go home, I want you to look it up and read it. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. For as we have many members in one body. Most in our day are just looking for a free ride. They want to be part of the church, but they don't want to have any part in the church. Let me encourage you to get active in the work of the church. Let, let the Lord use your life here for his glory. If you're saved, you have been given a gift. There's no doubt about it. You've got one. You need to find out what it is. And you need to start using it for the glory of God. Make it count for His glory. I want to ask you again, we started off this way. Do you think there's something special about this place? And if you do, if you do, serve the Lord here. Whatever He calls you to do, He'll equip you to do it. He'll prepare you to do it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, thank you for this time of opening your word. And Lord, I just thank you so much for uh, allowing us to just see into the heart of David this morning. And Lord, to, to, for him to just uh, remind us of what a special place this is. Not, not because it's, uh, not because uh, of the architecture of the building and the stained glass and the carpet and the pews and 
Lord, all those things are, they're, they're beautiful and they are wonderful. And, and Lord, we're thankful for each and every one of them. But Lord God, I'm thankful for each man, woman, boy, and girl who is present here in this place this morning. Lord, that is the church. Lord God, I am thankful that I, I, I come to a church and I'm, I'm allowed to serve in a church, Lord, where God is present. Lord, I thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to work and to move here each and every, each and every time that we gather. Father, I pray that, uh, Lord, that you would uh, show us our task and, and, and help us to, to move forward on those tasks. Lord, help us to stick to those tasks and see them all the way through the end, Lord, and everything that we would do would be glorified, uh, would be glory, glory uh, in your name, be glorified in your name. And Father, as we, uh, Lord, as we seek to do that, help us, Lord, to keep that balance, Lord, that, uh, it's really not about the church. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus Christ. And Lord, let that be the center of our lives. And let all the other activities of, of, of our lives move out from that. And Lord, not, don't let church just be a, a name or a word or, or something that we do. But Lord, let it be, uh, let it be uh, a calling. And Father, as you uh, use us and grow us, Lord, we give you all the honor and glory and the praise for all that's accomplished in it. Lord, to be one here this morning who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father God, I pray that as we have this time of invitation, Lord, that they would come and just and uh, let you deal with them. And Father, if there's one here this morning who, uh, who hasn't been as active as uh, they know they should be, Father, I pray that they'll come and, and Lord, just seek you uh, this morning, that you would... Uh, Put them back in the place that they need to be, that they can serve and, and be involved and be active. And Father, if, uh, if there's somebody here this morning who just has uh, something on their heart, Lord, and they just need to lay it at the foot of the cross, Lord, I pray that they would take time to do that this morning. So, Father, may I just ask that you would uh, go before us, open our hearts, open our minds, Lord, that we would draw closer to you. These things I ask in Jesus' name.